I know Easter is a, is a week away still, but uh, I think quite a bit of, uh, about what Jesus did for us. And, and uh, some of my thoughts are is uh, at times we look down upon people that have uh, that been put in jail. We look down upon the people that have been arrested. John was mentioning that earlier about your identification. And I'm sure we've all been pulled over at times and, and uh, question about our speed or something we've been doing driving. But, but uh, Jesus was arrested and he was put in jail. And, uh, you know, he could have called 10,000 angels to, to uh, rescue him, but he did not. He, uh, he was an innocent man and he still went to the cross for us. In the book of John, in uh, chapter 18, uh, this is Jesus before Pilate after he was arrested. Then the Jews led Jesus from Cephas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid uh, ceremonial uncleanliness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked them, "What What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, he would not have been handed over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words of Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that... Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side truth listens to me. What is truth, Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for you to release to one prisoner at a time, at one time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him, give us Barbarus. Now Barbarus had taken part in a rebellion. Let us go to Father in prayer. I initially went to a a thought when you said that, John, about our name being changed. When I was 18 years old, six months and four days, I entered into a a deal at... uh, Fort uh, McClellan, Alabama, and I'd always gone by the name Brad. I never did John, but uh, in my paperwork was something different. I told him my name was Brad, and I said, I don't care what your mama called you. Your name is Moyer, John B. now, and I've signed my name ever since then, and I can't wait till Jesus says, your name's not Moyer, John B. anymore. It's whatever it's going to be. So I've been thinking about when Dave read about Jesus being arrested. I want to read something from Ephesians, but... Uh, In my Bible, it talks a little bit about what Paul was thinking about and where he was. And Paul was in jail when he wrote Ephesians. And uh, this is in jail, and it was one of his most optimistic and encouraging correspondences. This is a man that was in jail. And I think most of us, modern thought on becoming a Christian is it's it's a great life. It's easy. Now everything's just going to be behind us, and God's got everything controlled. But back in, in Jesus' day and, and the, or the Jews that became Christians, most of them were being persecuted in places and ways that we can't even comprehend or understand. I think being arrested and being put in jail was probably mild compared to what most of them went through. And uh, it reminds me of a little bit of where grace comes from and what we're called to do, what actual sacrifice is. And I'm going to read Ephesians 2, 4 through 9. God, being rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ Jesus. By grace you have been saved, so that in the coming ages he might show his immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness 
towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace we have been saved through faith. And my thoughts on that are that what the price that was paid for us was death, a brutal and cruel death. And sometimes what I consider maybe a sacrifice is giving up a little bit of my time to come pick up something in the church parking lot or help clean the bathrooms or give a little bit of money. My idea of sacrifice doesn't include giving up my life, doesn't include going to prison for my beliefs. But yet the early church, that's what they did. To become a Christian meant you were giving up the life you knew. And here we spend a couple hours on a Sunday and a Wednesday and maybe gather on a Thursday or a Friday to encourage one another, but I have to look at myself, what am I truly doing for Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed for my salvation? Consider these things. Let's go to our Father in prayer.